Today we are going to decide whether I have an active or passive insufficiency of my finger flexors or extensors while performing wrist flexion. First, I will start by getting into a long short scenario by having my finger extensors lengthened over my wrist joint while my finger extensors are also shortened over my fingers. My finger flexors will be shortened over my wrist joint, as you can see here, while also lengthened over my fingers. Now I will perform flexion actively in this situation because it will eliminate the possibility of having an insufficiency. I see that I made it to roughly 90 degrees of flexion. Now I will perform flexion again, but in a short, short scenario and long, long scenario. My fingers will be flexed, causing me to have short finger flexors around the fingers and around the wrist, but having my finger extensors lengthened around my fingers and lengthened around the wrist. Now I will flex my wrist actively. I note that I can only get to roughly 60 degrees of flexion. Finally, I will perform passive range of motion in this short, short, and long, long scenario to determine whether I have active or passive insufficiency. Since I was able to get myself to my original range of motion passively, I know that I have active insufficiency of my finger flexors because I lack the power to get there.